In 2014, Ethereum came up with an ICO where one ETH was $0.3 and today one ETH is worth $2,150. So if you had invested 1,000 rupees in 2014, today that 1,000 would have been 71.6 lakhs. So what is Ethereum? Let's learn. Ethereum was co-founded by Vitalik Buterin when he was just 19 years old in the year 2013 and Ethereum was released in 2015. So Ethereum is a platform where you can make dApps. dApps is nothing but decentralized applications, NFTs, smart contracts and so much more. So the cryptocurrency associated with Ethereum is called as Ether and Ethereum also has its own coding language which is called as Solidity which runs on EVM. EVM is nothing but Ethereum Virtual Machine. So Ethereum Virtual Machine is a software on which you can go and code in Solidity and make decentralized applications. Isn't that exciting? What makes Ethereum so unique from all the other cryptocurrencies? Let's explore. So Ether is the native token of the Ethereum blockchain, whereas Ethereum is a platform on which you can develop your own decentralized applications. Ether is the fuel to run these apps. The process of making decentralized applications on Ethereum blockchain is not free. You need Ether to pay the fees and this fees is called as gas fees. Now let's take a very simple example to understand this process in a much more simpler way. Say suppose that there's a note-taking app on the Ethereum blockchain which lets you add data, edit data, delete data. Now in order for you to make all these tasks possible, you would need a certain computational power from the network. To cover this cost of power, you would need to pay a certain fee. This is nothing but the gas fee, which you pay in the form of Ether. DApps, as the name suggests, stands for Decentralized Applications. Now these are those applications which work on decentralized peer-to-peer -peer networks. There's not a single body or single company governing it. It is independent. Now the biggest advantage of decentralized applications over centralized applications is here you get to govern your own data. You are not giving it to some centralized company. For example, we all know that Facebook is free. But do we also know that Facebook is monetizing on your data? They show you ads and make money. But whereas in decentralized applications, you are directly using the app and your data is not being shared with anyone. Isn't that cool? Now let's understand what are smart contracts. So smart contracts are those contracts which are smart enough to execute themselves based on a certain conditions. Kya hua? Confused ho Let me give you a very simple example. Imagine we both have a smart contract wherein I say that if you like this video, then I will upload more videos. If this, then that. This is nothing but a smart contract. Now you might ask ki Pratik ye smart contract likhte ka hai. So basically you write all these lines of codes on Ethereum virtual machine. Circling back to a smart contract, make sure that you're smashing the button so that I can keep on making videos for you. DeFi is nothing hi-fi. It's decentralized finance. Imagine getting a loan within few seconds. Imagine getting an interest on your crypto holdings. Imagine getting insurance without paperwork. Imagine line mein khada nahi hai. Imagine rukna nahi hai. You need not imagine more. All of this is possible, my friend, through the Ethereum blockchain. Now let's have a quick comparison between DeFi and traditional finance. In DeFi, you hold your money. Whereas in traditional finance, your money is being held by companies. In DeFi, you control where your money goes and how it's spent. But here you have to trust companies not to mismanage your money like lend to risky borrowers. In DeFi, transfer of funds happens in minutes. But here, it might take up to a lot of days. DeFi is open to anyone, irrespective of which country you are from. But in traditional finance, you have to apply for these services. For example, Aadhaar card, padega, PAN card, padega, na chane kitne documents dene padenge, uske baad hi aap traditional finance ke koi services le sakte hain. DeFi is open 24-7, but whereas traditional finance is not. DeFi is built on transparency. Anyone can look at products, data and inspect how the system works. But whereas financial institutions are closed books, you cannot ask to see their loan history or record of their managed assets and so on. So definitely DeFi is still new. We'll still have to wait and see how that progresses. But what is more interesting is $55.35 billion is already locked in the DeFi protocol running on the Ethereum blockchain. How cool is that? 
NFTs are non-fungible tokens, which can be used to represent ownership of unique items. They let us tokenize things like art, collectibles, real estate, you name it and you can tokenize it. NFTs can only have one official owner at a time and they are secured by the Ethereum blockchain network. No one can modify the record of ownership or copy paste a new NFT into existence. These tokens are made on Ethereum blockchain and you can sell these tokens in the open market by putting them up for auction. Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, sold his first tweet as an NFT for $2.9 million. Isn't that exciting? Let me know in the comment sections if you want a dedicated video on DeFi and NFT. Now we have spoken a lot about Ethereum, let's see how is it different from Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a store of value and can be used to exchange value for goods or services. Whereas Ethereum is primarily used to pay for dApps running on the Ethereum network. Bitcoin blockchain only keeps records of transactions whereas Ethereum blockchain can run lines of codes. In simple words, Bitcoin is decentralizing the payment system whereas Ethereum is decentralizing the internet. Time taken to confirm transaction in Bitcoin is 10 minutes, whereas it's just a few seconds in Ethereum. Bitcoin has a total supply of 21 million, but whereas Ether has no fixed max supply. But there's a limit that only maximum 18 million Ether can enter its supply annually. If you're still watching this video, I'm really glad. And now I'm gonna tell you what Ethereum 2.0 is and how this is going to change the whole ecosystem. So as you know, Ethereum is growing at a rapid pace and there are a lot of decentralized applications coming on the Ethereum blockchain. With these, there are a lot of problems arising as well. For example, high gas fees. Proof of work is leading to carbon footprint of the network. Low scalability. Right now, the Ethereum blockchain can only manage 30 transactions per second. And Ethereum 2.0 is nothing less than a software update. Jesse, aapke phone mein ek update aata hai aur aapka phone tez ho jata hai. Similarly, Ethereum 2.0 is an update on the existing Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum 2.0 is aiming to become more scalable, more secure and more sustainable. Now let's try and understand how. Ethereum 2.0 will replace proof of work with proof of stake. In proof of stake, miners will not have to solve complicated math problems, but they will have to stake 32 Ether to become a full validator. You will be punished if found validating wrong transactions. So even validators have their skin in the game. Proof of stake is an upgrade which enables improved security, scalability and energy efficiency. Ethereum 2.0 will introduce sharding. So sharding is basically taking out the load from Ethereum main blockchain and distributing it to 64 new chains. This will increase the scalability of Ethereum from 30 transactions per second to thousands of transactions per second. Let me explain this with a very simple example. Imagine there are 100 cars going from Bombay to Pune and there's only one lane. Definitely there would be a lot of traffic, there would be a lot of congestion and the time taken to travel from Bombay to Pune would increase. Right? Now imagine that there are 64 lanes originating from Bombay to Pune. How efficient it would be for those 100 cars to travel from Bombay to Pune. It would definitely be fast. It would save a lot of time. Likewise, Ethereum 2.0 is concentrating towards becoming more scalable, becoming more sustainable and becoming more secure. Now let's talk about EIP-1559. EIP stands for Ethereum Improvement Protocol and this protocol suggests on making some revolutionary changes in the way we pay fees. So let's try and understand this with a diagram. So in the current scenario, fees are paid to miners who also receive the block reward of 2 ETH per block. But whereas in EIP-1559, the base fee is burnt, but a tip and the block reward still goes to the miner. So basically, the fees is divided into two parts, one which is a base fee and a minor tip. So base fee is getting burnt and tip is going to the miner. If this protocol is implemented, Ethereum would become deflationary. Simple hai. Jitne zyada transactions honge, utna zyada base fee burn hoga. Jitna zyada base fee burn hoga, utna kam supply hoga. Aur jitna kam supply hoga, utna zyada price padega. Disclaimer, let me tell you that I'm not your financial advisor. All I'm trying to do here is trying to educate you about blockchain and crypto space the right way. If you want to learn more about crypto or blockchain, check out dcxlearn.com where we have uploaded a lot of blogs 
go through them if you still want to learn something more you can comment below and i'll make a video out of it i could have spoken so much more about ethereum but definitely all of that is not possible in one single video let me know if you like this video this is pratik shigli signing off